All right. Good evening and welcome to the second session of The Witcher Let's Play. Um, last time we left off... We stopped at the outskirts of Vizima. Chapter 1, where the game really starts. So, we're going to load up the game and continue from there. Let's go. Here we are. Um, yeah. A couple of things I noticed, though. There's the woman who died. I think. Yeah, that's her. Um, so yeah, I... When I was going through the footage from the last session, I... noticed that I had missed a whole bunch of little things, like, for example, did not oh and there's a bunch of new ones as well so I'll read those but I did not introduce Vesemir at all so let's start with that um, Vesemir is the oldest and most experienced witcher possibly older than Kermoran itself he spends each winter in the fortress and sets off on the road when spring comes just like all the others despite his age Vesemir is robust and lively many youngsters could envy him his health. An excellent fencer, he was the one who taught me swordsmanship. Uh, he has raised many witchers, including me. His disciples treat him like a father. Leo was probably the old witcher's last protege. The boy's death shocked him. He was one of a few who survived the assault on Kaer Morin. I thought he was the only one. <laughs> Anyways, he is well aware of the magnitude of the hatred some people feel for witchers. Right. some additional information. Um, after, on Tris Marigold. After Leo's funeral, the sorceress tele teleported to Vizima, so she is somewhere close to me at the moment. Um, she decided to use her extensive contacts and search for information on Salamandra. Tris promised to find me as soon as I arrive in Vizima. So apparently Salamandra is a well-known organization. It's just that people don't really know who their leaders are. So that's why these guys probably knew about knew about it in the last video. Um, they're shining. Um, soon after I arrived in the outskirts, I met Shani, an acquaintance from a long time ago. In quite dramatic circumstances, Shani is completely devoted to medicine, her passion, and she had plenty to do in the outskirts so there was no time for small talk. I got the impression that this sensible, intelligent girl likes me a lot. Huh. And then there's Alvin, the boy. A boy named Alvin managed to escape the Vargas attack, which cost his foster mother her life. As a result of the shock, he started to divine the future and uttered the prophecy of Ithleen. I suppose Alvin is a source. He has magical powers he cannot control. Yeah, so... He has, runs the risk of going insane, as was explained in the magic s Yeah, unless the individual in question, also known as a source, learns to control their power quickly, he or she may end up a half-insane slobbering oracle. <clears throat> so, yeah. On a bunch of things here as well characters. But I think that was all of it. So, locations... I guess I should read up on these as well, so... Monsters to Frightener, Quests, Formula, Potion for Triss... Oh, 
didn't read this. According to Lambert's instructions, the potion for the unconscious sorcerer Triss can be made of selenine, a frightener skull, and a suent mushroom, though calcium acum can replace the latter ingredient because they contain the same element. These things. Uh, once gathered, these components should be mixed with white gull. Not necessarily in any alcohol with a strong enough potency should do. But, you know, that's what we had available at the time. So, um, quests. So, yeah, so let's read up on these. Temeria, which is the region we're in. Uh, Temeria's population is not exclusively human. It also includes dwarves, elves, gnomes, and dryads. After the devastating war with Nilfgaard, many areas are haunted by monsters, which have hitherto, hitherto not constituted a serious threat, while the realm's roads are made unsafe by outlaws and common bandits. As a result, the witcher profession is once again in demand, though people continue to treat witchers with caution and disdain, often calling them mutants and freaks. The kingdom of Temeria has silver lilies on a black background as its emblem. This powerful country has gained even more influence in recent years under the wise rule of King Foltest. The king we helped, or Geralt helped, earlier, so he owes us, apparently. Um, across the Pontar River, the kingdom borders Redania. To the south and east, it is hemmed by in by mountain ranges including Mahakam, the mainstay of dwarves and gnomes, past which lie the lands of Lyria and Idrin. The capital of Temeria is Vizima, uh, lying on the shore of Lake Vizima. The second largest city is Maribor. Temeria means its own coin, the Oren. The most widespread regions, religions are the cult of Meliteli and the belief in the eternal fire. Temeria is home to the headquarters and many commanders commanderies of the Order of the Flaming Rose. And then there's the outskirts, where we are now. Like any large city, Vizima also has its outskirts. Near the city walls stand the houses of townspeople, who could not afford to live in the city or could not stand the stench of its gutters. A little further out among the fields and meadows, peasants have their thatched roof homes. Unfortunately, the hard times have left their mark on the outskirts. Many houses are vacant, their owners killed in the wars, slain by monsters, or taken by the plague which ravages the area. Now, one interesting thing the developers of the game could have done is they could have included a smell indicator, right? So, kind of like we have the talisman up here, which I shall uh, show you. You can set the talisman to vibrate when monsters are near, or when these things called places of power are close by. So, you know, you can use it to detect bad things or good things, basically. Yeah, that's that. Characters, locations, glossary. There's nothing here, so... The Catriona. A disease which quickly spread through all the northern countries after the war with Nilfgaard. Those who suffer from Catriona die a terrible death. Their convulsions become stronger each day. They vomit blood and mucus, and have bloody diarrhea. After a fortnight or so, they die in agony. Lovely. Dwarves. Dwarves are shorter than humans, but tougher and more muscular. Male dwarves wear long beards. They're usually gruff, but can be merry, and are renowned for their stubbornness. Considered excellent craftsmen and warriors, many have earned grudging acceptance in human society. Still, it's not uncommon for young dwarves to join join the Squiatel rebels to fight for more rights for non-humans and an end to persecution. So there's racism. Um, and there's Ithlin's prophecy. An old elven prophecy about the end of the world. The wolf's blizzard approaches, the time of the sword and axe, the time of the white frost and white light, the time of madness and disdain, Ted Dareth, the final age, the world repairs amid size and re be reborn with the new sun, reborn of the elder blood, of any care, of a planted seed, a seed that will not sprout but burst into flames. 
so we heard Alvin recite that the last video and that's it and there's quests oh so there's information here as well okay so this is how we ended up here I was lucky enough to track down a man who wears a salamander shaped brooch in a settlement outside Vizima the locals may know something about the organization I must win their trust to learn where I can find the members of Salamandra. I should talk to the most prominent people in the community. So that's what we're doing. Uh, as the leader of the local community, the Reverend may know something about the man with the Salamandra brooch. I should see him as soon as possible. And... Yeah, this just describes Alvin's little reaction to the beast. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it seems the outskirts have mysteries of their own. To fathom them, apparently I should see the reverend. Okay. So yeah, that's that. Um, are we still recording? Yep. Sure looks like it. And we're still in windowed mode. Yep. <laughs> I don't want to lose this recording um so yeah let's see if we can well first of all we might have gained a level so yeah new talents so hero Ooh, no, that's nice now intelligence we're going to need these so for now we're going to distribute all of my silver talents into intelligence to get these, because this is important. And we sh that should give us more monster entries to read <laughs> again. Oil preparation, important. <sighs> these might come in handy, but I'm not going to mess with them too much just yet. Also, steel swords. We'll be fighting Bargusts, and at this point, I don't really have that much endurance. And Ark doesn't really do any damage, so it's not not like not like I, I can just kite kite the enemies and and blast them with that and kill them. So I'll have to get in close. So I'm thinking maybe I should. Well, fast steel seemed to work well against them, so... Yeah, I'll just put these in here. So... Oh! I lost girl. Level 4 strength. So I guess I... <sighs> Decisions. Okay. What I'm thinking is, Erden, right? This is a trap spell. I guess I'm going to go with sword fighting, and then complement that with some... If I get into trouble, I'll just use Erden and possibly Igni and Ard. And possibly put one level into Heliotrop, because casting Heliotrop calls fire. Also, Heliotrop is one of the spells added by the FCR mod. It replaces Axi, which was kind of useless, I never used it. It was a mind control slash fear spell. Not really useful. But, okay, so fast steel. Armor penetration. Can I? No. Really put any strings. This might be useful, so that there. Then I have two more talents which damage and damage. And 
that's that. Now can I... Alchemy Medallion. Current mode, detecting monsters. How do you set that? Hero... Hmm. Inventory? Ah, right here. So detect monsters or detect magic. I'm going to... Keep it here. Right. Any new... Well, sort that, first of all. This. Frightener's Eye. I still have White Gull, so I could imbibe that. Possibly. Let's see. White Gull. Oh, but I don't have... Quibirth. Quibirth. Nor do I have Rebus. So I'm going to have to find ingredients. Placed all of my talents. Read all of these. So we'll meditate. And head to the inn. Army life, tough. Clear the howling. Yeah, so new entries in the journal. There's an inn. So White vinegar ingredients. By upgrading to these, upgrading these, I Geralt re recovered some of his lost memories. So now I know something about these monsters. Because the whole idea is that because he lost his memories, he's lost most of his abilities, and we're regaining them as we're going along. So yeah, but journal and monsters. These are always interesting, so I like reading them. Just go through here, nothing new, nothing new formulas, ingredients, abomination lymph. So yeah, a lot of ingredients. <laughs> here are the individual elements, white vinegar, an alchemical catalyst obtained from the carcasses of ghouls, algools, scimitars, and graveyards. Graveyrs. Graveyrs. Graveyr bone. Obtained from the bodies of graveyrs. Ghoul blood. Obtained from ghoul carcasses. Frightener's eye. An eye removed. Well, these are obvious. Ectoplasm. Obtained from the bodies of ifrits. Bargasts, specters, noon rates, and night rates. Drowner's brain. Obtained from drowner carcasses. Death dust. Rates, noon rates, night rates, and bargains, so it just basically states the source. Calcium vacuum, a popular mineral commonly referred to as horse lime. Um, yeah. But this is where it gets interesting. Some of these are really nice. There's a lot of efforts being put into these. So we'll start with the bargains, because that's what we saw recently. So, Barghest. People say that Barghests are specters which materialize as ghastly dogs and persecute the living. According to some folk tales, these monsters are the scouts of the wild hunt. Other legends say the ghosts appear as a sign of divine retribution and embody revenge. However, all tales agree on one point. Barghests show the living no mercy. Yeah. Drowners. Drowners are scoundrels who ended their wicked lives in the water. Drowned alive or thrown into deep water after death, they turn into vengeful creatures which stalk the inhabitants of coastal settlements. They're creatures of the night. They appear on the banks of ponds, lakes, and rivers. Immune to bleeding, blinding, and poison. Attempts to... Uh, attempts. Fearless and immune to stun attempts. Hmm. Just a sec. Be right back. Be alert!
I'm back. Yeah, so. Ghouls are encountered on battlefields as well as in cemeteries and abandoned crypts. Ghouls are said to have been humans who were once forced into cannibalism and after many years spent in dark crypts underwent a horrifying transformation. Only human flesh can satisfy their eternal hunger. So they kill people and store the remains in the recesses of their lairs. And graviers. Hello. They appear wherever they can find food, preferably human corpses, but any carcass will do. After the war with, Nil war with Nilfgaard, graviers became a real plague. Until then, the monsters were familiar only to specialists and professional beast killers. Thus, everyone mistook them for ghouls. Today, any child could give an accurate description of a gravier, and people who have passed near battlefields or necropolises, necropolises, blah blah blah, blah offer first-hand accounts of the horrible murders committed by these ruthless necrophages. Necropolises. <clears throat> like that so yeah I'm, I'm going to be doing a lot of reading so yeah now I distributed the talents check the barrels for any possible loot I'm I know I'm supposed to be role-playing this but you know it's in the barrels nobody's really using it for anything it seems like so I'm just gonna take it I might refrain from taking stuff from people's, ha people's houses, though. Might. Now, who's this guy? He looks well adorned. <laughs> Greetings. Greetings. What a despicable place. I'm trapped here with my goods while my wife and children wait in the city. Why is that? Vizima's gates are closed due to the plague. The gods be my witness, nothing ruins trade like an epidemic. I guess we just have to wait. Most of the diseased have died off, but the beast and bandits now spread their own terror. All we're missing are tax collectors. Hmm. Can I ask you something? Yes? Okay, so he's a merchant. Hmm. Okay, back again. Um, sorry, interruptions. Um, so what's with this plague? What's with this plague? What of it? Tis some variety of the bubonic. To be safe, I avoid any who appear even slightly ill. Aren't you afraid? I'm immune to infectious diseases. My grandfather claimed the same, insisting all the while that his bubonic ulcers were merely boils. Hmm. May the ground lie lightly upon him. Yes. Okay. It's <laughs> funny. Well, not funny, but, um, yeah. So what about the beast? Tell me about the beast. I overheard it described as a phantom, appearing from nowhere, murdering those with a heavy conscience. Interesting. <laughs> Royal officials would make a true feast for the beast, and other ghosts serve it, apparently in the form of untiring bloodhounds. I'll have to ask the locals. Yes? Okay. So the beast is after people who, well, possibly, is after people who are dishonest and have done, done something terrible in the past. Possibly. Vengeful spirit. According to him. Yeah. Any bandits in the outskirts? Any bandits in the outskirts? Indeed. They call themselves the militia and extort bribes. Also, some sect from Vizima may have arrived here. Do these men wear the salamander sign? Never met them. But if they are a sect, the Reverend ought to know something. I'll ask him. Yes? Okay, yeah, I guess that's it. Though so there are some bandits from Vizima. 
or a sect from Zima and just the village militia. Let's see what he has though. Um, oh, now these cost a lot. <laughs> I'm piss poor. Okay, um, but yeah, we're going to want these. So, time to start saving. Yeah, nothing really. Well, ingredients, but I don't want to waste money on these because I can collect them myself. Nine orns. So yeah, unfortunately, I won't be buying any wine today. Let's head to the inn. Hmm, a notice board. Maybe I can find some witcher's work. Yeah. So, this is one way to pick up pick up quests. Oh, hello. Now he's fine. Oh. What do you want? Always give strangers such a warm welcome. It's all the same. The beast will have us all. I'm glad we talked. Let's celebrate. Farewell. Hmm. So, what do we have here? Ooh. Let's see what these are. Read them. Um. So it's the book and Witchers, Frightener, Frightener's Vision. Ah, oh, so a quest on arrest warrant for the professor. Oh, not the... Oh, it is hereby declared that the man known as the professor is guilty of numerous crimes against the crown, including but not limited to murder, assault, defying city guards and officials, and other wrongs against the kingdom's up. Kingdom subjects. Whosoever provides him shelter will be deemed guilty of aiding and abetting him in his crimes. It is thus the duty of each subject of the crown to assist the effort to seize this man. A reward of one thousand orange is hereby offered to anyone who assists in bringing this man to justice, dead or alive. On behalf of His Majest Majesty, King Faltest, Vincent Mice, Captain of the City Guard. So I guess there are people with a similar agenda to mine. And more entries in the journal. The ghoul contract. I need the blood of at least three ghouls. Will pay handsomely. Calcstein the alchemist. Okay. So that adds a... Quest. The drowner contract. The Church of the Eternal Fire seeks individuals capable of dealing with the drowners at the riverbank. Payment is contingent on supplying proof of killing three of the beasts. Bring their brains. Why brains? Why not just hands or something? Inquire with the reverend. Okay. And the Bargast contract. Brave man urgently needed. Whoever brings me ten Bargast skulls will receive one hundred orange. Abigail, herbalist. And there's another one. So, quests. And some entries for characters. So, the professor. It turned out that the assault on Ken Moran was not the professor's first foul deed. The arrest warrant shows clearly that my opponent is a wanted man. Yeah. That's everything, <laughs> hopefully. So we'll go in and see what's up. <laughs>